So today we're gonna to talk about three exercises that will make your rotator cuff worse. And when I um, ask my patients when they come in and they're having a lot of shoulder pain and they've tried other physical therapy offices, these are the three exercises that they have tried that did not work and actually made them worse. So I have Victoria here, she's gonna be my model. And today we're going to be talking about the three exercises, what makes, why this, why it makes it worse, and then what are some things that you can do to start improving your pain in, in your shoulder. So three exercises, the most common ones that we see that patients do when they go to other physical therapy offices, when it's like, I'm not really sure, you know, what I did, but the doctor said I had a rotator cuff. They'll basically give you these three exercises. It'll probably be a thing where if you go and you have physical therapy and they give you these three exercises, it'll be a sign of, mm, maybe this is not the physical therapy place for me and I probably shouldn't be spending money on this. So the first one is they'll give you rotation. So their elbow will be in the side and they'll just pull and rotate it in just like this. They'll have a band, it'll be up against the door. So they'll do it this way. And then they'll also do it where it's pulling to the outside. So elbow, nope, keep the same hand. Elbow will be it right inside and you're gonna pull it out. And we'll talk about why this is not good to do here in a second. And then the last one is facing me, you will they'll have the band and they'll basically be doing rows. And so the reason why these aren't great is again, you have to get to the source of what's going on. A lot of times they're doing it incorrectly and that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. You can see how the shoulder can be a little bit, I'm gonna exaggerate it, rounded through here. And so if you're gonna be pulling in and your shoulder's rounded, it's gonna crowd this space, causing more issues because this is where your rotator cuff is and if there's smaller space, you're actually working that muscle, it's going to hurt, which is why these are not exercises that you want to do. So the first thing and you, if you hear me talk about anything else, we have to work at mobility first before we can get into some stability. So we, we've got to make sure we can get the body in its normal position that it needs to be in. If we look through here and the shoulder blade is here and it gets really rounded, it hangs out here when it's supposed to be down and back in this position. And so that can happen because of weakness that's going on. It can happen because they're, the ribs through here have kind of been stuck out. So then the shoulder blade wants to rest through here. It can happen because there's some tightness in the front. But when it's rounded, we can even see if we raise the arm up, we can't even go up very high. But if we can get the shoulder blade to come down and back, now we raise it up, there's a lot more space and we're going to notice that the range is going to be so much better. So that's the first thing that we have, have to look at is the function of the shoulder. So if you're having something where it's rounded and you're doing the exercises and we're rounded and we're doing rows, you're basically clamping down on that space and it's going to cause some irritation. So what are things that you can do? The first thing is most of the time when people come into the office, it's where they come in and like, I'm not really sure what I did. I started hurting one day. They're not super inflamed, but if you are super inflamed because maybe you kind of fell or it's just super irritated, this is the first exercise that I want you to do so that we can kind of calm things down. And it's going to be sitting in a chair. So you'll just sit in a rolly chair. And your arms are going to go up on up on a table and all you're going to do is you're not going to use your arms you're going to use your body you're going to roll out and just start bringing the body forward to give you a little bit of motion and then rolling back in <laughs> and then you'll kind of roll out with the chair and roll back in and this just will give you movement where you're not actually using any part of the shoulder to kind of flush out some of the inflammation and things that are going on the next phase is if, if everything is feeling pretty calm, it's like I can rest and I don't have that much pain, but when I use it, it kind of hurts. Those kind of things is we've got to make sure that we improve the function. And one, one obvious reason of what we have talked about before is improving that mobility first, but there are other videos that are going to show you how to do that. And I'll make sure that those are in the description as well. We're going to go into more of like the strengthening and what it needs to look like in order to do some of these exercises correctly. So the first one, let's go back to that rotator cuff exercise. So remember how we said the shoulder was forward. We want to make sure that shoulder comes down and back so that they, their shoulders come down and, and back a little bit and really holding the muscles through here. This does a couple of things. 
First is it starts activating your muscles along the shoulder blade. And um, that's gonna be important because the, you need to have some stability there so it takes some of the pressure off the rotator cuff, not doing everything because part of the stability of the shoulder comes from those shoulder blade muscles. So if we bring the shoulder blade down and back, we can do the same exercise where they pull it in. You just wanna make sure the shoulder's down and back, elbows right, right at the side, and then you're gonna pull in and then pull out while you're trying to maintain the shoulder blade being down and back. It feels very different than doing it the other way. So you'll do the same thing with it pulling out, same kind of thing, shoulder goes down and back, the band's gonna be here and she's gonna pull out this direction where the band is off, it was off in that direction. And so that's how you can work on improving the rotator cuff because if you can get the shoulder again down and back, it's gonna keep the space more open and have less irritation. Now, instead of the rows, a lot of times with the rows, what happens is we row, our shoulders are forward, and we end up rowing like this, or we try to row, row kind of back, and it kind of crowds this space. But remember how I told you with the shoulder blade, a lot of time what happens is the shoulder blade back here can almost wing. Like I can almost get underneath the shoulder blade through here. And a lot of times it's because the shoulder blade's been hanging out here and the muscles that go across the lower part of that shoulder blade, we call those the lower trap, they aren't firing very well. So instead of doing rows, we can do another exercise that will help pull that lower sh shoulder blade back to help us maintain much better positioning and posture with our shoulder so that we can keep the space up. So that exercise is what I call bilateral external rotation. So you'll hold both hands, I'll have her do it in a second, elbows by your side, shoulders down and back, and you pull out the band like this, squeezing those shoulder blades together. And when you do this exercise, elbows by your side, squeezing the shoulder blades together, you're gonna feel it lower. And because your arms are where, in the position that you're in, it's gonna make you use the correct muscles of those lower trap. So we can bring that shoulder blade down and in instead of it wanting to kind of come out here. And it hangs out here because of a lot of things, but one of them is the weakness in that lower trap. And so we're basically trying to get those muscles to kind of fire and then come back out. And so these are three exercises, really probably four that you can start doing um, to improve your rotator cuff um, strengthening as well as the pain that's happening in your shoulder. And again, I always say phase one is improve, looking at mobility. You've got to look at neck, you've got to look at thoracic spine. Um, how does a shoulder blade and shoulder move together? When that's all resolved and feeling really good, then we start on stability. And so these videos are really looking at more stability exercises. And like I said, there'll be other videos down below that we will um, show, share with you in the description. Again, my name is Stephanie. I'm with Empower Physical Therapy, and we help clients avoid surgery, injections, and medications, even ones that have tried seven, eight, nine, ten different healthcare providers. And so we're on here just, again, trying to provide education and help you navigate the medical system and your issues that you're having.